Welcome to the Goth and the Sloth. I'm your Sloth, Matt. And I'm Luna the Goth. This is a podcast of two friends living a country apart, burning it down from both ends. We decided we'd take the first year of our podcast and discuss the COVID-19 pandemic, how it affects our lives, how it affects your lives, and how maybe there's some bright side coming? Mm. Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> how have you been? Uh, all right. It's been kind of a chaotic week emotionally, yeah. but... Not much has changed, so I don't know. Yeah. How's that uh, <laughs> microchip sitting in you? Is it? Uh, I mean, it seems or? to be hanging out. I don't know where it is right now. I think it might just be bopping around from place to place. Um, <laughs> but as of right now, I have not been activated as a what is it? What agent am I supposed to be? A Russian agent? A Chinese mm, agent? I maybe know. Chinese. Yeah. I don't who know. knows? Depends who who. who who you who you're talking to and who they hate exactly <laughs> mm-hmm. unfortunately how about you how are you doing you know i'm on call this weekend or i was on call this past weekend so i'm exhausted cuz uh according uh, to my fitbit i got 7 hours of sleep over the entire weekend ew because uh someone decided to call me at 7 a.m. because they couldn't maximize word wow that constituted an emergency call. Hmm. Do they? Oh, oh no. Yeah. At least you know you have job security. <laughs> right? That's uh, something. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> as depressing as that is. The worst one was not to go off on on call, but our 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 service desk opens up at six a.m. Mountain Time. I got a call at 5.50 a.m. this morning. I couldn't wait 10 minutes. Oh, no. That sucks. Uh, Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. And then, yeah, I couldn't get back to sleep at that point either, so. Fair. Anywho, it's... (laughs) Let's dive into it. So how's the greater Virginia area doing? So, um, we're actually doing a little bit better, uh, relatively speaking, yeah. always relatively speaking. <laughs> um, so we're at 605,967 cases. So, and we're only up 11,232 from the week before. So that's good. That's a smaller number than usual. It is. Um, our hospitalizations were at 25,820 which is up about 523, and we are at 10,127 total deaths in Virginia, uh, and so we've lost 108 people in the last week, which obviously, way too many people, but it that is yep. definitely lower than it has been lately, so I don't know. I guess that's good. It's so weird. Um, it is. <laughs> we have 47 cases of multi multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children and 24 percent of the population has at least one dose and that is up four percent from last week so all right woo. i'm one of them yay yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and our positivity rate is kind of hovering at the same at 5.6 so okay i don't know what that's about but i don't know <laughs> anyway um and that's kind of it what about you what's it going on in colorado uh so we're doing again better question mark uh 450,934 cases which is only up 8,000 week to week uh 24,513 hospitalizations which is only up 328 week to week and 6,162 deaths, which is up ni- only 90 people week to week. So that's looking good. But our positivity good. rate is way up at 6.6%. Oh, no. Um, but uh, other good news is we're at 8,007... Sorry, 871,858 people are fully vaccinated. So Whoa. we're well up there. Cool. 
So um, they just opened up the vaccinations a lot more. It's not to the general public yet, but um, healthcare workers, um, kid, uh, all teachers, um, any frontline workers. Like you, you can find a lot of excuses now to, to get one. So, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. Um, in bad news, uh, state news wise is, um, well, currently right now, <laughs> I think it might be resolved, but, uh, there was a shooting at the, uh, King Supers in Boulder today. What? So, yep. That is like the last place I would have assumed a shooting would happen in Colorado. Right. Are people injured or was it just shots fired? Uh, there's still news coming in. It's very recent, so. Not COVID, but uh, just more More crap. 2020 bleeding into 2021. Yep. Yikes. Uh, well, we'll get into that stuff yeah. here in a little bit. <laughs> and then um, Douglas County has peti- officially petitioned the governor to completely open the state. And... Of course it has. <laughs> Who lives in Douglas County? Right. Oh, and it just God. makes me think of like Australia. They haven't had cases in like almost a month, maybe something like that. And they're still mm-hmm. under restrictions though, because they mm-hmm. know like it's not totally gone away. We can't just go, nope, we're done. Everyone g- continue, you know, playing ooky mouth. Like just jump. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't work that way. I know they want it to, but science is science. No. Yeah. So. Good times. I mean, they're they're opened way up in Australia. Don't get me wrong, but oh yeah, they're way they're still better. Than le- we are. But they're still a level of like they didn't do the Texas. Like everyone's good to do whatever you want now. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> they actually have like a whole system in place that the whole country follows. Yeah, weird. I know, crazy. <laughs> um, so that's about it. So what's new in Luna's world these days? Um, I don't know, like. <laughs> Just this last week has sucked because I had to actually like figure out what was going on with my taxes, which I still am in the process of. And then my apartment complex is raising rent, yeah. which is such a dick move in the middle of a pandemic. So I am 98% sure that I'm going to have to move, which is stressful as fuck, um, and find somewhere else to live and just it's just been a lot of stress and bad and like that i'm like working constantly Mm -hmm. just to like stay afloat and then they're like here's more rent and i'm like what what i was barely doing it as we could like before so now what do you want me to do so that has really really sucked um i guess on the bright side i like kind of reached the end of my rope and went for a run I hadn't done that in a long time, so I ran. That's good. That's something. Did you run so far away? Um, I did run so far away. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So anyway, yeah, I did that, and um, yeah, I don't know. Like, that's just kind of been it, and like, oh, I, um, uh, I guess spoke guest hosted guests co host I don't know um <laughs> but there was a uh there's a horror podcast that was like hey do you want to talk about Hyde from Jekyll and Hyde and I was like sure I like it <laughs> and um and I did the thing and that was a thing I really enjoyed it. I just don't know other people are going to really enjoy it because it's like me geeking out about literary hide and like internalized homophobia and the transphobia and Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde of 71 and like, well, you know, you know, you do the things with movies and horror, (laughs) you know. Um. So yeah, I did that and that was that was yeah, pretty cool. I did cool. forget to plug our podcast and I've been regretting it ever since. I know, I'm so sorry. Like it got to the end so fast and they were like, Is there anything you want to plug? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I just, Killing like, me, smalls. <laughs> I just panicked. 
But if I do it again, now I know it's like in the forefront, like make sure like at the beginning, just say, like, listen to our podcast, but you can hear that podcast. I don't know when it's going to air. So I'll just, I'll announce it then. But the name of the podcast is, um, humanoids from the deep dive. And it's like a deep dive into different monsters Very in cool. literary a movie or whatever. So that was a thing I did and it, it feels like I socialized, but I like didn't because I was still not wearing pants. So I don't know. I mean, I've known you for a while. You socialize a lot without wearing pants. That's true. You're not <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I didn't think about that, but you're totally right. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, I, You know, I meet most new people without wearing pants. Yeah. I have to rethink everything about my life. Huh. Okay, well, while I am grappling with who I am as a person... How did your week go? <laughs> uh, you know, about the same. I, 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 I'm gonna steal your thunder a little bit because my rent is also going up, um, yeah, but probably sucks. not as much as yours. Um, but I mean, probably just as the the unfortunate thing is that, like for me, I was scraping by, yeah. and so I cannot afford it if it goes up. Yeah. So that is what sucks but yeah it definitely sucks if it goes up at all it does ever and, uh, yeah i looked around you know did the normal do my due diligence and anywhere else is gonna be losing square footage um for the same price so mm-hmm. um i guess i'm sticking around don't have a whole lot of choice <laughs> i know yeah I'm, but... I'm i'm gonna be losing probably definitely losing central air Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, that was the only one that was close. I was like, maybe this one, and then I saw in the pictures, like, wait, that's a wall unit. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just. But I think what I'm gonna do is just like move into somewhere where I can save money for a year, mm-hmm. and then I'll be in a better spot after a year, because the pandemic just fucked me with a pineapple. So. Yeah, well. Anyway, continue. <laughs> Anywho's and then um as of today, officially today, I'm back on Nutra System, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, your good old friend. Yep. Uh you know, did really well on it last time, so You did. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Maybe you just need a little reminder. Yeah. So and you like tell your body like if you don't lose weight, this is all we eat. <laughs> this is all we get. <laughs> They did upgrade their ice cream sandwiches, though, because I did have one of those, and it was much better. So. Oh. All right. <laughs> Good for them. Um, but beyond that, nah, that's about it. Same old, same old. So. Yeah. Oh, the band is playing a show this upcoming Sunday, so we're Ooh. prepping for that. That's cool. Where is it at? It's going to be at Herman's Hideaway. Oh, nice. So that'll be fun. Yeah. So let's dive into it. What are we talking about this week? All right. Well, uh, this week we're going to tackle a major topic that I personally don't think is discussed enough in social justice spaces or any spaces for that matter. Um, This past week, the U.S. saw another horrific domestic terrorist attack in Atlanta. A white man killed eight people in Atlanta. Almost all of them were Asian women who he perceived as sex workers. Um, So lots of layers of bad here. Mm -hmm. Uh, The country united once again in tragedy, standing up with our Asian and Pacific Islander community, who has been adversely impacted by the pandemic due to the previous president's rhetoric around the coronavirus. If you somehow missed it, he consistently blamed the virus on the Asian population and his followers just bought into it and said it over and over again. It became a pretty widespread belief, even though it's wrong, false, not true. Um, So unfortunately, like in in the uh, wake of all of this, unfortunately, there have been some really ugly comments uh, made in communities of color about how black communities and Asian communities haven't historically stood by each other, which in a very general sense, is true. Obviously, there are little incidences here and there with that 
is not the case, which is great, and I hope they happen often. Uh, but in general, yes, there is some, there is, I don't even want to say something, there is a lot of anti-blackness in Asian communities, and there is a lot of anti-Asian-ness in black communities. A major reason that this is the case is because of something called the model minority myth. So, I don't, have you heard of the model minority myth? I have not, no. Okay. I, it, like I said, I feel like it's something that it just like isn't talked about very often. Um, so the whole idea of the model minority myth is that Asians and Asian Americans are quote unquote, the model minority of the minority populations. They're the ones you want to model after. They have a solid quote unquote, typically these, these are stereotypes, right? These are mm. not always true, but the stereotypes of this myth are that Asian populations have two-parent family structures, they have a social network that stays together, lifts each other up, um, they place enormous em emphasis on education and hard work, and that's where you get the whole, like, Asians are good at math, Asians are good at business, yeah. you know, that sort of yeah. thing. Um, and so there is this idea that the why can't the rest of the minorities just be like the Asian population? And you might look at this and say, well, that doesn't sound like a bad thing. Like, you know, those are all positive attributes. Well, the model minority myth is harmful to literally everyone but white people. Yeah. To the Asian population, it is sticking stereotypes on them that aren't true and it creates a lot of uh pressure within the asian society and i and i would love for someone of asian descent to share their thoughts on this um but from my perspective and in conversations i've had doing social justice work like it puts a lot of strain on folks in the aapi community because they are expected to fill this model minority shape or like stereotype that mm -hmm. they may not, they might not be good at math because they're human Yeah, or they might not be good at science because they're human. Um, and the harm to everyone else in, uh, marginalized communities or people of color specifically is that it creates this hierarchy of good versus bad minorities. Sure, yeah. So then if Asians are the model minority, then what is everyone else? And then you have people that believe in the model minority myth saying, well, why don't you just be more like them? Why don't you have a community that sits up with, why aren't you just really like working really hard and pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and all that stuff. <laughs> but the system isn't built for us to be, to do that. I mean, we've talked about on this show before that capitalism and classism and white supremacy don't allow those things to happen. You can say do hard work all you want, <laughs> but it doesn't make it go away. Yep. And so I guess the reason why I wanted to talk about this on the podcast in, is for a few reasons, but the biggest thing is that, well, there are a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so one, Asian Am Americans are not a mod monolith. When people think mm -hmm. Asian American, they think usually Eastern, East Asian, yeah, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. And even then they may not even understand the difference between them, yeah. but they just think East Asian. But Asia is massive. It is. There are people speaking so many different languages from so many different countries. They have so many different physical attributes, different skin tones. I mean, it's ridiculous to assume that it's a monolith. Um, so that is one thing that I want to remind people. And the biggest thing here is that the model minority myth is a tool of white supremacy. Yeah. And that sounds like, I don't know, buzzwordy or like 
I don't know. She's being so blah, whatever. I don't care what you think about me at this point. <laughs> Honestly, I just want you to realize that it is true. I mean, every word of that perpetuating the model minority myth is perpetuating a tool of white supremacy. It, it, it forces people of color and communities of color to pit against each other instead of working together mm -hmm. to overthrow to use a nice strong word that I like, <laughs> white supremacy. Yep. Does that make sense? Am I making sense? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, okay. cause I can, um, I can also see it creating a lot of animosity of, you know, between races and then, yeah, there shouldn't be like, Oh, these guys are the perfect ones. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, when you think of any you be more like them, yeah. And when you do think of stereotypes for Asians, they tend to be more positive. There are negative ones mm -hmm. too. Um, but yeah, they tend to be on the more positive side and yeah, it's just, yeah, now That's you're not forced, a good thing. Yeah, that, now you're I forced think... to live up to that. Yeah. And not like, yes, the, there's this idea that like, okay, well now you have to do all of these things that this myth says that I'm supposed to do. And if I don't, that's a failure. Um, let me speak to my personal experience. Uh, so in my experience, I have experienced some extreme anti-blackness from the parents of my fr Asian friends. And the biggest, most hurtful thing that I've experienced is, I, so I have this friend that's Asian and we're hanging out and things are great and blah, blah, blah. Like we're laughing, we're having a good time, but the, their parents did not want me around their child because I was a negative influence and would prevent their child from living up to the model minority myth. Like, putting a wedge between families of color when community is so important yeah. to survive as a minority, is, it's like, it's the trickiest thing. And it, the worst part, in my opinion, about the model minority myth is that it is carried out by a large part, um, in large part by people of color. Mm -hmm. People of color perpetuate it more, almost more than, like if, if people of color just sat at, like looked at each other and was like, this is some bullshit, then the model minority myth wouldn't matter. Right, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So, And it can be surprising that that even exists, um, at least the animosity between uh, various minorities, uh, at least to white people, because... You know, me being in the suburbs and the nice areas of like, no, they all get along because they're all going through the same struggle. And that is not the case at all. Mm -mm. I mean, yeah. And it's uh, like I mentioned, like there were some ugly comments that are probably still be being flung around in different spaces um, that the black community hasn't stood up with the Asian community in the past. And there's a lot of pain associated with that. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not that every, these are again, not monoliths. This is just a, a generalization of some things that have happened in the past. And so some people are saying, well, why doesn't the black community rise up? Because you know, this is BLM, you know, you did this for BLM, so why don't you do this? Well, first of all, this is not BLM. We're not talking about BLM. BLM needs to sit down right now because this is not about BLM. Mm -hmm. This is about the AAPI community, period. Second of all, you can't do this transactional justice yeah. thing. It's not going to work. We're going to set ourselves right back at zero. And that, again, is a tool of white supremacy. Yep. Yeah, it's it's true. I, I appreciate you mentioning that it's surprising to hear because it it shouldn't be, but it is not, you know. Yeah. No, I think you're... It makes sense that it doesn't, it doesn't per permeate communities that don't see it all the time. Yeah. 
Like, you're the one that even told me that uh, there's a bit of animosity uh, between, like, southern black people and island black people or Caribbean black people. And I didn't realize that was a thing until the second season of, uh, um, oh, uh, Luke Cage. Oh, yeah. That, that was yeah. the main part of that. And I was like, that's, <laughs> didn't even realize that was a thing. You're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, that's why those shows are so important. Sometimes, you know, like sometimes I I am this is like a tangent, a side tangent, but sometimes I find myself not being very forgiving of shows like that mm-hmm. because I'm like, well, that's obvious. Why are we writing a like why are we writing a story for white people like we get it like this is starring all black people we know our experience why are we going over this but then it's like oh wait this this show isn't for us <laughs> but it's okay because it also does help white people understand some of the intricacies of what happens in communities of color yeah even though it's not necessarily for us but i mean hopefully we can have some <laughs> <laughs> some super, superhero shows that are like okay well we won't go over it's almost like you know how you talk about the um the spider-man origin story and how everything has yeah. a spider-man origin story mm-hmm. it's kind of like that it's like we don't need the ins and outs of how the black community works we can just have a show that's set in the black community and yeah. we understand how it works <laughs> you know <laughs> But, you know, that's down the road for another day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get there. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's interesting to bring up, too, of like how big Asia is that people always forget that. Um, seeing pictures on Twitter of like highlighting the Asian continent. Like, this is Asia, which includes mm-hmm. India and the Middle East. And, and like it's the biggest continent and but while we think about parts of russia are in asia yeah the biggest parts of russia are in asia um mm-hmm. but yeah all we think is korean japanese chinese maybe vietnamese mm-hmm. um what's that he, yeah like you said like well, like you said even between then we don't even realize the difference sometimes Absolutely. I mean, it's yeah. the joke on South Park where they had the Chinese restaurant and then the Japanese restaurant came in, so they called it Little China. And <laughs> mm. It's true, yeah. So I just, um, a couple of things that I think might be helpful to people going, well, one, you know, this episode, again, is mostly for the white population or people that just didn't understand that this was happening. Yeah. I wanted to give some context for why you might be seeing some of the things you might be seeing. And um, if you see someone having strong feelings about anti-blackness in the Asian community or anti asianness in the black community, please don't try to minimize their feelings. Mm-hmm. They're founded in something that they probably experienced and that's probably hurtful to them. Just recognize that what is happening is because of white supremacy. It is not up to you to change a person of color's mind about how they feel about something. Yeah. Just understand that you need to support that person and however they feel and then also recognize that the best way forward is for everyone to be together so however you can approach that that makes sense without you overstepping (laughs) (laughs) to someone else's history or past um then that that would be the most helpful thing you, you can do yeah um additionally if you are not in the aapi community obviously reach out to those in that community see what they need right now um, it's really sucks to feel hunted. Yeah. It really fucking sucks. And again, you'd think that we'd all be all together on this because black people certainly know what that feels like. Um, but again, not everybody is on the same page. So just recognize that it is a horrible, like, um, I can't remember. I, there's a word that 
I associate with, but it's gone right now. It's because we're, we're recording, and when you hit the record button, like all the <laughs> smart words go away. Yep. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's just a, a feeling that I cannot describe adequately. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, so look out for those around you. See if there's anything that you can do for nonprofits that are in your area. Um, see if there's any way that you can support people in your life that you know that are in the AAPI community. Um, and again, just kind of have some grace for people that are hurting in all tangential areas of this tragedy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that's those are the most important things I wanted to say. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Well, uh, something that I found kind of interesting about this whole thing is it has brought a lot of people to tell their stories, at least on Twitter and stuff, of uh, different Asian stereotypes and how it's affected them. And not even necessarily the monolith ones as much as also, you know, the over-sexualization of Asian women and how that's a mm-hmm. huge part of culture. Which, ironically, I was watching a movie that had a scene about going into a Asian uh, masseuse and assuming he can get a happy ending because it was an Asian. Oh, no. And it's like, awkward. Oh, no. That's not going to age well. <laughs> it's already an old movie to begin with. But, <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, but that's how much it's built into our culture, stuff like that. And mm-hmm. um, there's a really good video uh, from Lindsay Ellis about how uh, trans fear has been put into movies so much that it's like built into our culture. In absolutely, uh, there's a whole documentary about that. It's on Netflix. It's very good. Yeah, nice. Um, but yeah, I think it's interesting to hear everyone's stories on Twitter and how you know this has a f- not only this has affected Asian the Asian community, but how you know we kind of forget about them in a lot of ways too because they are you know we always yeah assume they're just doing just fine and forget that you know there is marginalized as any other minority Mm -hmm. um and yeah i'm glad you mentioned that uh there is another aspect to this that i want to highlight that the internment camps oh yeah of japanese americans in the u.s wasn't that long ago nope it was like what from 42 to 46 i should have looked this up i'm pretty sure it's it's like 40 it's like through the end of the of world war ii Mm -hmm. um and a little after and there's a really good podcast series that npr no that the Smithsonian did. Oh, great. I'm going to mess this up. I don't remember. <laughs> um, I'll have to find it. It's, but it's really powerful and it walks you through everything that happened. And again, this wasn't that long ago. Like this is grandparents and great grandparents. This is not like gone yeah, no. from our living memory. George Takei was in one of those camps. Exactly. Yeah. And so anti-Asian sentiment in America is not new. Right. Trump was not the first one to do it. Don't think that this is like, oh, well, this is just, this just happened. Mm -mm. No, this is long standing. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't forget Um, the uh, rail workers uh, mm -hmm. that built the West, essentially. We're all generally Chinese Americans. Or Chinese immigrants, mm-hmm. and we, they were all treated terribly during the whole ordeal. Exactly. Um, yeah, so I I just, I, yeah, I've been hearing some of this stuff where it's like, oh, well, this is just new, and it's just this. It's just the coronavirus. No. No, not at all. No, no. it's not new. Um, so, yeah, just keep that in mind. And uh, I'd like to read this quote from uh, Jamel Bowie. Uh, who wrote just a really interesting uh, phrase in a Slate article. 
uh, the quote is, in fact, racial resentment reflects a tension between the egalitarian self-image of most white Americans and that anti-black affect. The quote, racist, after all, is a figure of stigma. Few people want to be one, even as they're inclined to believe the measurable disadvantages blacks faced are caused by something other than stru structural racism. Framing blacks as deficient and pathological rather than inferior offers a path out for those caught in that mental maze. So just another, um, hopefully a more eloquent <laughs> <laughs> way uh, to point out the, um, the harm in the model minority myth. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, unless we got anything else, uh, we can move on to the next part of our podcast. All right, so now we're going to move to our distractions. What are we doing to distract ourselves with the, with the fact that it's apparently COVID's down enough that we're having shootings again? Right? America. Can we just get a break? <laughs> so what are we distracting ourselves with? Um, so for me, uh, like I mentioned, I was a guest on that podcast and, uh, it's called Humanoids from the Deep Dive. So I spent a ton of time thinking about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> um, and I basically took about two hours of my life to watch, uh, no, three hours of my <laughs> life to watch the two phases of Dr. Jekyll, which is the 61 hammer hide uh film and the dr jekyll and sister hide mm -hmm. oh my god <laughs> i have so many thoughts and i talked about those thoughts on that podcast but like i have so many thoughts <laughs> <laughs> but did you watch it the tom cruise mummy because russell crowe plays dr jekyll in that absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Um, but I did reread the story, the novella, um, which was interesting because it was like, this is very light compared to all of these later adaptations. Yeah. Like there, are, there's no subplot. There's no romantic anything. Like I read it a long time ago, but rereading it, I was like, oh, oh. That's yeah, a very short story, too. Yeah, they took a lot of liberty with this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's still really good. Um, I I haven't really been thinking about like classic horror in a long time, mm -hmm. so it was really nice to distract myself. Like especially after all the bad news of like I'm gonna have to find a place to live and I don't know what where to move that's safe and blah blah blah. I was like, fuck it, everything sucks. I'm going to watch these old movies and read this book. And it was, it was a nice little escape. Very nice. Um, so what are you up to? What's your distractions? Oh, so many things. Um, I started my Brad Pitt watch through and I watched two, uh, eighties Brad Pitt movies that no one's ever heard of, but they have baby Brad Pitt in them. So those are fun. <laughs> Uh, so that was dark. I like Brad Pitt. Dark Side of the Sun, uh, where he plays a guy with a skin disorder that can't uh, touch the sun, uh, so he wore a gimp suit for most of the movie. Oh, like sunlight. Yeah, sunlight. Yeah. He can't. I was like, nobody can touch the sun, Brad Pitt. I disagree. I think we can touch it. We just haven't tried yet. All right. All right. Well, I'll watch you disintegrate as you approach it okay then anyway go yeah ahead. if you want to watch a uh a, a more artsy take on essentially the boy in the plastic bubble um mm. there, there's that um and the other was a very horrible 80s slasher knockoff movie called cutting class and interesting i haven't heard of that one yeah it's it's very much an 80s slasher movie um it's it's got its own charm to it because of like the age and the time and all that fun stuff, but it's it's pretty dumb. <laughs> it's 
tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Um, and then outside of that, uh, a ton of work uh, for upcoming videos coming up. I finished all my voiceover work for my cable, the history of cable coming up. So that's nice. going to be fun. I, I did the voiceover for my worst to best Fast and the Furious movies. So there's a reason why I watch them all. It's for a video that no one will watch. But... <laughs> Did you decide you were going to do a video before or after you started watching uh, them? Before. I, I oh, knew okay. it was going to be for content. Okay. But it, it was fun to kind of voice, uh, you know, I, I do it, in, um, I don't like piece it together. I do it all in like kind of, not one take, but, you know, I do each one. As, so starting with the worst one and like how disappointed I felt. And it's like, uh, the, the time I'm like the last one, I'm like raving about, yeah, and then they did this and it was all awesome. <laughs> You found a system so, that works. That's going to be great. Uh, that's coming out. And then I've also been doing research for another video because if you remember last year, I did the top uh, seventh movies in a franchise. Oh, yeah. So now I'm doing the top <laughs> eighth movie in a franchise. Oh, my gosh. And so. F- How many are there? So far, I found 27 franchises that have hit at least an eighth movie. Oh my gosh, Matt, there's so many good movies you could be watching. I'm not going to watch these, and a lot of them I've seen already, too. Um, Oh, okay. Because, like, uh, you know, the eighth Freddy movie is Freddy vs. Jason. I've seen that so many times. I know what I'm talking about, that one. I mean, you can probably watch it again. (laughs) That one would be the worst. Um, You know, the eighth (laughs) Harry Potter movie is the final good Harry Potter movie. Mm-hmm. Before it goes to the Fantastic Beasts, and no one likes those. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so that's been interesting, though. Just to yeah, find what franchises have gone that far. Like, uh, th- there's yeah. been nine Ernest movies. Did were you aware of this fact? No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> what? I, I don't think I'll. Why do we need I nine? I don't know, but I will not be diving into those ones. <laughs> I'm glad you have some, <laughs> you you have a line somewhere, and that makes me feel better. Uh, then on top of all that, I also did start Federation Friday and rewatched the first uh, Star Trek movie. Um, at first, I was like, well, why is everyone, like, I, I have seen it, but it's been a while, and I was like, why is everyone bitch about this one? It's kind of nice. It's not too bad. The effects are real bad, but, you know, but then, like, I don't know, maybe halfway through, I was like, is it still going? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. Okay, this thing does not end ever. <laughs> yeah, there's like not a lot to hold you there. You're just like, okay, all right, still all right. Cool. I mean, I did like that it, it basically portrays Captain Kirk as a piece of shit, and that's kind of fun to me at least. Because he sure. comes and takes over the ship without any like prior like helping anybody. He treats the the new captain like crap. I was like, yep, that would be Kirk. He, he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's uh, jump into uh, the most famous part of our podcast that everyone enjoys. Only in a pandemic. Or major civil unrest. Stories that can only happen in a pandemic or major civil unrest. What do you got for us? Uh, so, only in a pandemic do... I don't know how to phrase this. Only pandemic do I feel like I have a leg up on Halloween choreography. Okay. Because. So we have a recital that's coming up. That's like our little showcase because we can't have an actual show Mm -hmm. and blah, blah, blah. But we still want the students to like show off some stuff. And that's all the choreography that I'm working on right now. And, um, some of it's really good, which I'm pretty happy about. But so the studio decided that they're going to ask the students to wear flesh colored masks. <laughs> and to me, I was like, that is terrifying yeah. <laughs> to have a bunch of mouthless students like dance. I don't know, man. I just feel like, <laughs> but they will already have flesh colored ma- masks masks i can't speak flesh colored masks in october 
So I could uh-huh. probably use this to my advantage and choreograph this like creepy mouthless horde um, that I guess stares at you and sucks your soul through their eyes. I don't know, something. I mean, one. I mean, that's pretty good body horror right there, missing the mouth. That works. <laughs> Yeah. I know I sent the other teachers like this picture of a like mouthless ghoul. Like (laughs) when I saw that that was the choice that was being made and they were like, ah, and I was like, exactly. (laughs) I think that's the most terrifying (laughs) part of the Matrix is when uh, his mouth closed in on itself. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like, well, I have to use this to my advantage somehow. There you go. So beware of the children with no mouths. <laughs> What's your only in a pandemic story? It's only in a pandemic does Tyra Banks teach us our new, our most important newest social interaction skill. So oh. I realized this while trying to talk to someone like a stranger in a mask while also wearing a mask. Smizing <laughs> is now an incredibly important part of our social interaction. Oh yeah, and that's where I, I first forgot about that whole. That's thing. where I first heard about it was from Tyra Banks way back when. Huh. That is now an inc- go Tyra. Now an incredibly important part of our social interaction is it really? Maybe she's just been rocking this yeah. this whole time. Like she was able to like have full conversations with the mask on, barely yelling, <laughs> <laughs> and everyone else is like. I can't tell how you feel about these right. things. Because, <laughs> yeah, like, you and me aren't necessarily super vocal, especially with strangers. So you just, like, smile and, like, nod. And you lose the smile parts. <laughs> and you're just like... It's so true. You know, you're totally <laughs> right. I don't, I don't even, like... At first, I used to, like, use my mouth more behind the mask. And now it's like, that's too much work. <laughs> you get a slight squint. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty great. Thanks, Tyra. Thanks for the smizing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right, let's wrap this up with our Leonardo DiCaprio scale of where we are as a hermit. So a 10 being, uh, let's let's stick with Howard Hughes, and you've been locked in your personal theater for months, and you're collecting pee in jars. And a 1 being... Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street, and you're running around doing coke off of hookers' asses. Where where are you at? <laughs> uh, I would say I'm like at an eight because even though I didn't like go anywhere and didn't talk to anyone, mm-hmm. I still did that podcast, and so that counts as like talking to strangers. I certainly sure. sweat enough for it to count. <laughs> um, and then I. I didn't really, yeah, they were really the only ones that I talked to, so. I don't know, it feels like an 8 seems right, but also not like the worst 8 in the world, because I didn't actually have to do anything or go anywhere, so. There you go. <laughs> what about you? So, um, yeah, it's, uh, let's say probably an 8, maybe an 8.5. Um, oh, okay. You know, hung out with my band, and we uh, did some practicing, and then um, I thought I, for some reason I heard crack cocaine. <laughs> I mean, oh no, my band and we did some crack cocaine. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's how thrash metal works, man. How do you get that fast? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, some practicing. Some practicing. Okay, way more yes. wholesome. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then it's also my brother's birthday and my dad's birthday. They're both within a week of each other, so we had a family birthday party at my parents place how's a puppy good he is huge and he's still getting bigger next time you go i want to see the puppy all right i'll send you i'll get some ones of him in the snow i'll send you over yay Uh, but yeah he is massive and he just bowls over my nephew (laughs) oh well your nephew will get sturdier as you go (laughs) I hope so. And he also, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they taught him to shake, uh, but since he's so big and he has so much mass to hold on three legs, Aww. it's like throws that arm right in your hand. <laughs> oh, sweet boy. Oh, he just wants to shake. You said to shake, and shake. he's like, okay. <laughs> 
just got a lot a lot of mass behind him. Aww. So yeah, let's uh, wrap it up. So if people want to hit us up and if they want to give you their story of uh, you know being an Asian in America, where can they do that at? Ooh, yeah. Um, at Goth and Sloth on Twitter and Instagram. And that uh, we have an email address as well at gothandsloth at gmail.com. Let us know if you want to share or you want us to share your experience on the podcast. We would love to do that. Um, and if yeah. you want to reach me, you can find me at L-U-N-A underscore M-I-N-U-I-T on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And that's it. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Matt? Where can people find you? I'm wizard underscore Matt on Twitter and wizard cosplay on the Instagram. My band is Leonardo Leonardo. You can find us at Leonardo Leonardo Band on Facebook, Instagram, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, and hopefully soon, TikTok. That's coming. We got ideas. Yeah, TikTok. And then my YouTube channel is Matt the Feral Wizard. Like I mentioned, we got some videos coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Awesome, love it. Oh All yeah, right. the band well, also you. has shirts on Te- on Teespring. Yes, you do. <laughs> I ordered one. It is oh, not here yet. <laughs> Make them send it to me, Matt. All right, we'll do. I'll get <laughs> right on that. <laughs> All right. well thank you so much for listening you guys um please wash your hands and wear your masks